Essentially, Terraria meets Dwarf Fortress meets Dragon or Dungeon Keeper, and a lot of fun ensues. So we're gonna give it a whirl, and we're gonna start a new game. This was going to be a first impression let's play, but I couldn't help myself. I'm honestly just a really big fan of Dwarf Fortress, and I just had to try it. But here we go, we start off with one little dwarf. Oh, that audio is quite loud. And you just get them to do things by clicking on what you want them to do. That little fellow is currently cutting down a berry bush and collecting the berries. And Unlike Dwarf Fortress, this does have tasks for you to go after, as well as a tech tree for research and whatnot. And it's actually quite interesting uh, to see how this plays out within the kind of strategy defense city builder. We're just digging along. And we are actually going to get him to cut down a tree, as well as try and find some stone. And there's actually quite a bit of it over here. So this is where we're going to send him next. We really do need stone. And kind of the nifty thing here about your dwarves is they can actually climb up straight ledges. So you don't have to worry. While ladders are quicker, they're not important. And when you cut down trees, you also get apples, which is a good food source, but you can't rely on it. You really do need to start harvesting these berries. And we spawn near some wheat, but that's not ready for collecting yet. So. We'll leave that be for now. And one other thing you can do that you can't do in Dwarf Fortress is you can actually take over or take control of your little dwarf. And it has some advantages. They work faster. But we're just going to leave them be for now. And if you look up here, we don't have any points, but what we do, we can use them in this grunt shop. And he has all sorts of things. Uh, materials, building supplies, tools and weapons, and just overall a nice resource to have available to you. Dig a tunnel, so we've completed another task. Now we just have to make some tools, so when he returns with the stone, we have stone and wood, we can make stone pickaxes, stone axes, and we'll give those to him. But we're also going to make a couple extra for the dwarves that come along after him. And unlike Dwarf Fortress, it's not an overtime thing. You get dwarves by completing tasks, and they just kind of portal in through that little hell gate. The Viking or Dwarf head on it. 
similar to when we started how he came through it. Now, like essentially all games, at night, monsters are going to come out, and they are going to try and kill our dwarves. Now, I haven't lost a dwarf yet, but I've read that you only have to wait five minutes for them to respawn, but that's really not going to be super helpful for us if we lose them too early, so I'm actually just going to get rid of all these jobs. I told him to do, and we're going to start working on some defense. Right here, actually, we're just going to build a pit. So if anything comes after us from this direction, they'll fall in the pit. And the reason we do that is monsters can break through your walls, which isn't very helpful. So you want to build a trench just to keep the monsters from getting in. Now, the monsters will climb on top of each other, and if enough monsters fall into the hole, they will be able to break the wall by creating a monster chain. But this little moat should be enough to hold them off, at least for now. And we'll build another one over here. Now, as you can see, it's raining, and it's actually filling up. So you do have to be careful about digging holes in the rain, as well as leaving the entrance to your fortress open, because you don't want to flood the fortress with rain either. As you can see over here, the bush is completely covered, and that was just from that little rain we had. So he's going to crawl up with the resources he obtained. We're going to dig another one down here, but first he has to get those berries, which will be very useful anyway. I'm just going to take a peek at the map here. Quite a lot of different animals around. A lot of resources there. There's a graveyard over here. On the edge of the map, which is just ocean. Killer plant grew underground. Oh, he just fell down a pit. He lost some health. They do regain health over time, so don't feel too bad if your dwarves get hurt. This, well, similar to Dwarf Fortress, is not nearly as unforgiving. And I mean, it's even much more forgiving than Banished. So overall, it really, I feel, deserves the casual title it's been given. Uh, but it looks like we're actually going to hit our first night without any defenses, which is something I was a little worried about. But, say lovey. And I'm not sure if the audio from the game is recording or not, uh, but he actually just started muttering angrily when he fell. That's what I was laughing at. I thought it was quite adorable. Now, if we get lucky, which, truth be told, doesn't happen very often when I'm doing Let's Plays, uh, we won't get swarmed by anything too angry on our first night. And with any luck, it won't be able to get over this. From this direction, we're quite safe. It would take eh, between three and five monsters to really climb out of that trench. Yeah, let's not risk it. You know, the dwarves will defend themselves if they get attacked, and while the monsters that attack at night do get stronger over time, 
your first couple nights are going to be relatively easy. And for those of you who are curious what I just did, the spacebar is actually a hotkey to zoom to dwarves. Oh, and I accidentally told him to kill that sheep, which I didn't mean to do. Ah, but it looks like it's happening regardless. Ah, stop attacking. If you want to undesignate a job you've told them to do, you just click on it again. But I'm going to get him to finish this moat. Just because no angry monsters have spawned yet. Okay, so we have our two trenches dug to protect us from monsters. I don't see any monsters, so... Well, there's our first one. These ghosts are just kind of annoying. They throw your stockpiled resources around, and your dwarves have to go after them again. But, all in all, just an annoyance compared to some of them. I'll get him to do that. And we're actually going to go into the crafting menu and explore this for a couple minutes. And it'll show you the different sections. This is what we have available for crafting. Some greens. We have a wear sign. And these are actually just what's been unlocked so far for us to make. Some food. And what we're going to do is go into the tools and armor. And we're going to look at what we need to make a stone pickaxe. And up here it says basic tool making as well as a progress bar. The more of the various things you make that fall under this basic tools fills that bar and it actually progresses and unlocks new technology. So we're going to make this Break the wood over. First thing we're going to make is a pickaxe. And the second thing we're going to make is a regular axe. I'm not 100% sure why it wouldn't accept it. I think it's because we had no, I guess it's just because we didn't have enough stone. So we're going to equip our dwarf with our stone pickaxe. And we'll talk about this for a moment. This is the digging tool. This is your weapon. And this is for cutting down plants. So you can actually equip an axe, a sword, and a pickaxe all at the same time. And you can equip each dwarf individually. As you can see, he's using his little pickaxe. For those of you that are curious, like most games, scroll in, scroll out. Uh, third mouse key is zoom. So we have a new dwarf for leveling up, and he's going to attack the ghost. But the ghost floated away. So what we're going to do is zoom out a little bit and just get them digging tunnels. As you can see, we do need ore later on for obviously better weapons and tools. So we'll dig up some of that as we're mining and start building a home, but we're going to check out the new tasks. Basic tool making. So we need to fill that as well as basic timber works. 
So these are two more crafting tasks where we just simply have to fill the bar. And we'll go in here. This is the basic timber works. We have a couple things we need to make as well as the basic tools uh, which we were working on. So what we'll need to do once we dig up some of this is go in my or cut down some trees I should say. And one thing I did forget to touch on is I'm scrolling around the map with the WSAV keys. And a nice little feature is it does show or light up around your cursor, which allows you to check out some things that you're vaguely aware of. Oh, and he fell too. And actually, since we're pretty well protected, I'm going to get them to cut down these trees and berries now. And the trees will grow back, so don't feel too bad about cutting down everything. Oh, and we're being attacked by a spider. And it looks like the spider's actually winning for the moment. Oh, no. But luckily we managed to survive. I'm just going to keep digging away. Once dawn comes around, these monsters we've been dealing with will disappear. Here's the toad. And trees do actually provide a variety of very useful resources. Resin is one of them. Resin is used to make uh, torches. And the leaves can actually be used to make some hats and things. Carpenter book increases the speed of making objects. So, occasionally, while you're digging, you will find the there are different books that will give your dwarves perks in specific jobs, and you just equip them to give them a little bit of a bonus. What we're going to do here is we're actually just going to start on the Timberworks one. We're going to make a few ladders as well as a wooden hatch. First things first, let's make the ladders. This will prevent our dwarves from falling down that hole. And down here, these blocks are where objects you can use go. And we're actually going to need to get them to remove that. And I think what we're going to do here is once we have this ladder put in place, we're going to end this episode and pick it up fresh. There, so now that's gone, we'll throw the last ladder piece in. Some various things that the ghost threw around on us. And a common mistake a lot of new players worry about is they call it building up instead of down. And what you really want to do is build down into the earth to protect yourself. It's more time efficient and just all around safer than attempting to protect yourself from above ground. Yes, it does mean that ghosts may steal resources occasionally, but it also means that you don't waste all your resources when you can simply do this for lack of a better explanation. And the goal is simply to protect yourself from the ghosts and monsters in the most efficient way while still completing the tasks and moving forward. 
and we've built our nice little ladder here. Tell them to cut down some more trees so we can build a hatch. And we're going to pick it up in the next episode. So thanks again everyone for watching Gaming with Murel, episode 1 of Craft the World. And I'll see you all next time.